Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Georgia and today I'm going to be watching episode 9 of Vice Versa. Last episode was one of my favourites so far. Production on the second movie produced by Friend Credits went underway. Uh, it is funded by Fuse and Kita, who I have not been fans of thus far, but I've come to appreciate them now that they're being helpful. <laughs> they're problematic, but they're good friends to Tess. And Tess in himself is problematic AF. So, you know, they're proving that there is good in them and they're funding Friend Credits film. They hired a new director whose name is Mech and he knew Tess and Tun when they were in high school and he hated Tess, but he also fancied Tess. <laughs> and, I and I love that kind of stuff. That was incredible and like the perfect piece of drama that I just love to watch. We had a sprinkle of Jealous Poon in there as well and it finally, finally, made Tele admit his feelings. And so now I'm guessing Tele and Poon are officially boyfriends. Like, I feel like I've been assuming that throughout this whole show that they're finally together, but they're not. But that time it felt like it was for real. They had their big magical kiss scene in the dark and it was such a great moment, although Poor one out for the lost homies, the glitch theory is no more because GMMTV have patched their video and there is no glitching in it anymore. I'm disappointed, I really thought I was onto something there. It was exciting because it seemed like, you know, oh my god, porky things are happening now. It was just editing errors by the looks of it. But the coincidence that there was a glitch in both the kissing scene and the near kiss scene insane but you know coincidences do happen and there is no glitching anymore so if you want to go back and rewatch that kiss scene without a glitch it's there episode 8 part 4 i'm slightly disappointed but it doesn't lessen my hype for this episode because it looks like we're focusing more on pern potentially his backstory maybe we'll get him revealing more about himself now that they're in a relationship and close and everything fingers crossed but there's still a birthday scene to look forward to it's his birthday Everyone's going to be coming together for that and I'm excited either way. If you want to watch my uncut reactions to Vice Versa, the link to the Patreon page will be in the description below. Leave a like if you enjoy and let's get into episode 9. Oh my god! <laughs> yes! He actually was stood there watching. That's, a <laughs> That's incredible. Oh my god. I half thought... Because this show, a lot of the time, hasn't continued on from where the last episode left on. I half thought that Perth wasn't going to be in this episode. They'll come back with a bit of a time jump and he won't be the director anymore. But the fact they've continued where they've left off and he did see them kissing, that is so funny. <laughs> oh, I love that. Oh. ที่กูบอกชอบไปเทสเลยกูก็อยากให้เพื่อนกูสมหวังอยู่ป่ะกูแกล้งเพราะกูหวังใช่จริงๆเออแฟร์นะดูแลทันเพื่อนกูให้
reverting back to the arsehole that he is. Or he could have completely developed in his year plus away from the reality. There's so much that I feel like could be done. There's so much I want to know regarding Tess and Tun's point of views. It's just sad we're probably never gonna see it there's so much more i feel like they could do with this concept with regards to the other characters like i've been told bls don't often get series two and if they do get series two they're like bad apparently i really feel like they could do a season two i would watch a season two from tess and tun's point of view just saying <laughs> Recreating scenes is Poon's favourite pastime. Oh, how fitting. <laughs> if I were Meg, I would have just left at that point. <laughs> เสียงใส่ใจตัวเองเว้ยสร้างกระผู้สร้างกระผู้สร้างกระผู้เราจะหวังอีกสักครู่ได้ป่ะวะเลิฟได้อยู่แล้วเพื่อนอืมถ้า
so badly. Did he have any family? Was that his first birthday, like, ever celebrated with loved ones? Or maybe not ever, but, like, as an adult? Has he ever had that warmth around him on his birthday before? What was his life like? Show us! It's someone else's life. ไอ้ประกอบก็ขโมยชีวิตกูไปเหมือนกันอ่ะมึงเคยถามประกอบยังมึงมึงไอ้คนที่เคยสัญญาว่าจะกลับพร้อมกูอ่ะมึงจะไ
Never, never put a dying animal on my screen. Oh my god. Oh my god. นางแก้ผ้าอย่างเงี้ยหุ่นดีตายแหละเอ้าตอนนี้น้องหมาฟื้นแล้วนะครับการผ่าตัดเป็นไปได้อย่างดีครับผมก็โอเคนะขอบค
there's a chance he might have known Tele's name from working on the film together in that one scene. Because if he knew Tele's name back then, there's a chance that he knew all along because, you know, the name Tele, having met, he could have remembered that bucket hat scene anyway this whole time. Whereas Tele, it makes more sense that he doesn't know because he doesn't know Puma's name. Does Tele remember having that interaction with someone because he drew the exact same stuff? Either way, whether he's remembered it now or he's known all along, Puma remembers something. <laughs> I am just getting around to editing this. I'm very confused at myself. <laughs> For some reason, this whole show, I've kind of been watching it with the theory in my head that Puma knows who Tele is and has always known who he is and I still interpreted the scene with that in mind and I think the scene pretty obviously is Puan's moment of realisation that Tele is the person that he met that one time um, so I don't know why I'm still questioning whether Puan has known Tele all along or not. Rewatching that scene now it's very obvious to me. <laughs> I love it so much more now. I obviously loved it at the time but I really love it now because when you think that Puan's moment of realisation, now he knows what Tele looks like. This whole time I thought he did, but now seeing that that was his first moment and how happy he was, now he finally has a picture in his head of what Tele looks like all this time he genuinely didn't know. To know that Tele was that kind stranger, because I feel like Tele might not remember that because it was such a small moment in his life. Whereas for Puan, it was probably quite a big moment in his. As someone who grew up alone, who had no one, who had like probably fake people around him in the celebrity world. To have that genuinely nice moment with a stranger was probably quite an important moment in Puan's life. Whereas for Tele, it was just an interaction with a stranger who he didn't really have any affliction for it was his friend who was the fan in the first place he just happened to encounter him so I feel like Poon remembering that first oh, it's so sweet and then the love on his face in his eyes when he was talking to Soleil having that picture in his head knowing that they do have that connection from the past universe and they had a moment beforehand where he probably felt feelings even then so that's like confirmation for him that Soleil is his soulmate and hopefully his porky. <laughs> and I think Tele must remember having that moment with someone but just doesn't know that it's Puan. But he might not even remember it because it was such a small moment in his life. But it's still a coincidence that he drew the exact same thing on the bucket hat. Even so, I thought that was such a good scene and such a beautiful moment. And I think Jimmy's acting in that scene was so good because you could see on his face the genuine happiness and surprise at finding out that he had met Tele before even though I couldn't see it the first time. But you know, we all have our flaws. An amazing scene. And I am so excited for the final three episodes of this show and to see where things go. Apparently Jimmy's favorite episode is episode 10 as well. So I'm very excited for the next episode for that reason. Um, yeah, bye. <laughs> is it a lover or an alpaca? It's a alpaca, right? เกือบใช่ครับแต่ละมันเดียวขอโทษนะครับอืมกูขออะไรไว้ในข้อที่ <laughs> 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 ว่าคุณน่าจะรักมึงแล้วว่ะยังไงแล้วมึงดูไม่ออกเลยไงยังไงพวกกูก็รักมึงเหมือนกันอ๋อฉันเลยดูสวยคิวในกล้องสิน่
<laughs> With the empty Chris bucket. So, this is the one that you two said that you're a fan. Thank you, Mr. Hey. If you go to the world, I'm going to think about this place. He's given him a pink flower as well. Talay's love for pink is growing by the app. One job, one chin. We. Who's on the phone? We. Go to the Tenskan Nang Mangkan. We. Ten. Ten. Oh my god, are they in the bath together again? Ten. 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 กูไม่รู้นะเว้ยว่าเราจะได้กลับกันไปเมื่อไหร่อ่ะกูอยากให้มึงรู้ชื่อจริงของกูไว้เพื่อมึงจะได้ตามหากูเจอก่อน Yes I feel like this show has ten thousand songs Okay first off we're going from Goshop to Galak next episode from like to love if I butchered that time. So no revelations about Puan's name this episode, which I did think we'd get. It looks like that'll be next episode unless they're teasing. But I still liked this episode and the conflict that arose. I think it was necessary for Tele and Puan to have that argument regarding Puan wanting to stay here. And while realistically Puan should be the one to tell this information about himself to Tele and not Pang, like Tele had to go back to Pang, to find out information about him. I don't think Pern would do it if they're in the middle of an argument. So uh, Pern's stubbornness with regards to talking about himself is a big flaw. But I don't mind so much because Bang telling Talay that stuff about Pern's backstory and how she can relate to that is moving the story forward. And it is sad, Pern's life does sound very depressing and sounds like he really has had a hard time of it. This must be such a nice reprieve for him in this universe and it's only understandable that he'd want to stay like I don't fault him at all for wanting to stay but it's not right it's not fair to Tess and Tan they have to go back and that is an inevitability well I mean it's not an inevitability because they might not be able to go back it's very hard to find the way to go back clearly but if the chance arises he, they have to go back it's only fair and I'm glad Tele went out of his way to try and understand things from Pun's point of view he spoke to Bang he spoke to Kita and Kita saying that he would want to stay in the other person's life if they had it good makes it sound like he has some problems in his life I mean he did say he had a fight with his dad and that was why he went to Tessa's condo in the first place so you know he probably has some familial problems too not that I think there'll be any depth into that but it was like it was like a hint that he has problems in his life and that he would want to stay in a life and that he gets Puan's point of view without explicitly saying that um and all this like kind of helped to lay realize that while he, he has struggles in his old life too, like financially and, you know, achieving his dreams and stuff. But he did have a family, he did have friends, he had people around him. And at the end of the day, what people need most is people. People that are there for them. And um, Puin never had that, which is very <laughs> sad. I said I wanted flashbacks or an insight into Puin's life. I take it back. I don't want to see him struggling growing up as a child having to support himself because that is sad but it's nice to know a little bit about his backstory now and he told Tele why he won't tell him his name and Pern remembers something there's still so many questions about well how long he's known this whether he only had that moment of realization then and I'm really questioning now what does Tele remember does Tele having that interaction with that exact same hat with a stranger in his old universe like you would think if he remembered that, he would put some sort of pieces together. I don't know. We're not in their heads. So who knows what they both know. But to so happy now we have confirmation that one of them knows something. And Puan looks so happy with that hat. And in that moment in the RV with Tele. Like, oh, that moment of happiness. I'm so easy to please. <laughs> that made me happy. Seeing them happy in that moment really made me happy. It looks like GMMTV has shown us in that scene the merch they're going to be selling. I'm going to guess they're going to be selling the t-shirt, the bucket hat and the notebooks. 
I also have been thinking throughout the series that they'll be selling those A4 folders, but they didn't actually show those in that scene. But I feel like they might sell the A4 folders too. The bucket hat has a lot more meaning for the show, but I don't do good in hats. This head is not made for a bucket hat. My head is massive. Maybe if it were a beanie. I do love a good beanie, especially now that we're coming for winter. But then again, by the time it arrives, it might be next spring and the bucket hat will be useful. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, I will definitely be opting for the t-shirt out of those items if they are being sold. Oh yeah, and Mech, that bit with Mech, I kind of forgot he existed for a second. Uh, I really liked that plot twist with Mech in the beginning that he doesn't actually like Tess and that he was doing it all to play with them. I thought that was a little funny twist. And also nice to know that he wasn't plotting to ruin the movie all along and that he doesn't actually like Tess so he isn't a threat to turn. He was doing it all for Tess's happiness essentially. He didn't say that but that was kind of his aim. If Tess and Tan return back to their bodies and Tess is a complete asshole still, even after a year away and he never had a wake up call, then I give Mech permission to whoop his ass. That's it for today guys, thanks for watching my reaction to episode 9 of Vice Versa. If you want to watch my uncut reactions to Vice Versa, the link to the Patreon page will be in the description below. Leave a like if you enjoyed and I'll see you next time for episode 10. Bye!